I'll let you do the intro. Me? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. You've done it before. No. You have. It was really good. You do it. Good. This is your car. This is my car. This is my car. I'm the duck man. Grab the laugh. Ha 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 ha. I guess that was effective. <laughs> no. Okay. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, welcome to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> and this is Beat McQueen. The one and only. Behind us here is a Carmagia. Yeah, not only any Carmagia, but B's very own 1971 Carmagia. As you know, we've been working on this. We've been collecting some parts. You probably saw over the last few mail call Mondays that we've had all kinds of different wheels and brakes and stuff associated with that. So we've started tearing that apart today, and we're gonna share some of it with you. I think before we get to that, why don't we licky likey, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly, that way you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out duckshit.net for all of our different social media links. Anything you'd like to include before we roll off the intro? I'm excited. She's excited. <laughs> well, it's that time. Let's start pulling this thing apart. We'll be back in just a second. have sound we do okay all right B's got her disc brakes up here and currently what she's doing is putting the lug studs into these things with some appropriate Loctite so that way they're ready to go show us what you got there Loctite Loctite I got some of these wonderful studs with a five and a half millimeter uh, allen key end so that way they can be shredded into place this will be the end result. Not too big of a deal, but we're trying to get this done now before we pack the bearings because it gives you a nice, quick, easy place to grab from without having to get your greasy fingers all over the discs. <laughs> all right, underway. Let's see what you got there. Time to pack some bearings. Now I gave you the quick rundown as to how this works. Mm -hmm. you remember that you have the bearing itself and then you have the race. This is what the bearing rides in. These races get pounded into the discs or inside the center of the hubs and then the bearing of course just simply drops on into place. So while she's packing the bearings, I'm gonna be tapping the uh, races. So we're packing and tapping at the same time here. It's gonna be a party. And uh, you know the method, right? Yeah. I showed you how to do Let it. Let me do that one first. Or I this don't one? care which one you do. It doesn't matter. Okay. Well, I have do whichever this one. you need. Right. You got that one. Okay. Just remember that you need that two fingered. <laughs> That's it. Oh. Can you like that? <sighs> Woo! Ooh, I hope you get any on me. You did. I did. <laughs> oh, she greased my ass up. You did. You got. Oh, man. Did I? <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. I'll live. Okay. Not the first time I had grease all over my ass. <laughs> Back here wiping my ass on camera. This is the first time you guys have ever seen that one. <laughs> I'm glad we got that on camera. <laughs> yeah, use some force. Like spank it, spank it good. <laughs> it helps. <laughs> Just coming up the middle. Yeah, you put your finger down in the middle of it to try to stop that. Oh. Or two fingers if you can get it in there. Yeah. Yeah, there if you go. have a two-fingered partner, then go for it. And kind of scoop. Well, we got, you don't want to, no, come, come back. It shouldn't be flying. If you're flying, you're doing it wrong. Just, just kind of dig into it. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, that's exactly what it's supposed to look okay. like. Okay. Now, for those of you who don't know, she'll show you up here in camera, up nice and close. But the grease is starting to ooze through that side of the bearing. It's kind of hard to tell because it moved a little bit. But it came through the surface over here, and then you turn it a little bit and keep doing it until it comes through again. This grease is, uh... It's really soft. I'm surprised it's not thicker. That's what she some said. of them are, some of them aren't, I suppose. But uh, 
and it gets warmer it'll probably turn into just liquid but you got it now of course i gotta put these in here these are real simple and not nearly as dirty just get in here and grease up the inside of the hub grease the inside of the hub on this one in addition to that, these are already been cleaned, and on the inside of the hub here, you're also looking for blemishes, imperfections, chips, scratches, dirt, metal shavings. Watch you don't cut yourself, but you make sure they're clean because these races are going to get pressed into place. Now, you guys have seen this happen on my YouTube channel before. This is nothing new. I'll demonstrate that with the old video rather than running you through this all again. There'll be links down below in the video description. That's the one race. Here's the second race. How's your packing coming? Pretty good. Right. Time real quick. Okay. Just, just because. Because okay. I didn't get to inspect that and I don't know where you're at. And if it's a dry bearing or it has a dry spot in it, it might fail. We don't want that. <laughs> Usually it makes more of a smell or sound when I do it. All right, and we got a socket. Socket is slightly smaller than the race. Races are in place. Simply tap on them, and they'll go straight in. If they don't go straight in, tap the opposite side until they level out. The tone of it will change. It'll go from, from a, a kind of a hollow sound to a, a light tink tink sound when it's bottomed out. That's it. Hear the tone changed? It went much higher pitched. It's bottomed out. Alright, the other one. Probably should be wearing eye protection because we are hitting on a hardened piece of steel. I'm sure somebody out there in uh, Never Never Land is going to tell me I'm doing it wrong, but you know, I'm the duck man, so. Oh, there it is. High pitched tone. Let's deliberately break the socket! <laughs> As if hitting it that lightly is actually going to do it, but you know. Everybody knows better than we do. Mm -hmm. All right, first one. Flip. Bearing. Dropped into place. Put a little more grease around the inside here. And drop that bearing right on where it goes. Then this rubber seal also goes in there. I like to grease these up before you push them in too, because being that they are plastic or rubber, if you force them in and they don't slide, they might get chewed up or worse yet, broken. Usually you can just push these in by hand. Yep, there it is, it's in. As soon as you get that one done, that one will go in this side. These races on the back side are already put in, by the way, you guys. I did that in advance. Our timing is pretty good. I figured that's about the same time that you get these in. Flip that one back over. Let's have one get one on the front side. You having fun with that? Yeah, I'm kind of making a mess. I see that. I At least it's not a CV joint. Wait I'm, until you do those. I'm learning. You'll have grease all over you. You'll have grease in your hair, on your face. Yeah. I can't see the beads going through it, so I hope you got it. Okay, I'll go through one more time. Yeah, I got to see those beads coming through, because once you run your finger over them, I can't tell oh. whether or not they're there. <laughs> You're so messy. <laughs> First Isn't time. it fun though? Yeah. Was your first time that messy? Yes. Is there red everywhere? Yes. Okay, then apparently this is familiar. <laughs> that's horrible. <laughs> you could drop them right in there. I think that's adequate. I see it's coming through. It's actually gone everywhere at that point. Plunk right into place. And then you got enough on that one. I don't even need extra. So we'll just smear that right around the edges. I'll take this seal. Good job. You got two more to go. The smaller ones are a little easier. Okay. Okay. Small side towards me. Yep. Oh, that is easier. If you put your finger through the hole. Yeah. Oh, you did have it that way, didn't you? Wear it like a ring and then... Oh. That stops the grease from going through the hole in the middle. Yeah, see, that's actually working. You can see it squeezing through. 
Of course, with the bigger bearing, your finger isn't the size of, you know, uh, Andre the Giant or something. You mean uh, like yours? <laughs> Actually, his pinky was probably about as big as my wrist. And I don't mean literally, but I mean, <laughs> it yeah. was huge. He had a big finger. <laughs> nailed it. Okay. Nailed it, nailed it. Drop him right in there. Yep, right in there. Perfect. And as you know, there's no seals on this side because this side gets a grease cap instead. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually gluing it in with grease. Huh. That's it. You're ready to go. Pack them, pack them. Pack, pack, pack. That is much easier. Isn't it? Yeah. In a bigger one, I try to shove my thumb through it up to the last knuckle. Yeah. <laughs> I try to scoop. And sometimes that's almost enough to do it. For the smaller bearings, you'd be better with the smaller fingers to be able to get through them. Yeah, it's coming through. Mm -hmm. The grease I was using was much firmer. I think it required more effort. That looks like you did a pretty good job. Good, drop right in there. Fantastic. All right. Am I done with the gloves? You are done with the gloves. Turn them inside out on themselves and uh, yep. I'll throw them directly into the bin. This is great. You got some greased up bearings here. These suckers are ready to go on. Yummy. Oh, I missed this one. Yeah. You got some on my ass too. <laughs> no, don't do it again, no! <laughs> no greasy asses, it's not even Friday. Okay, B is just itching to get started here. Right here in front of her karma gear, she's about to pull off this 4x130 lug patterned wheel. And we're going to start looking at the, the uh, factory disc brakes that are in there, get those removed and replace them with some much bigger aftermarket five lugged early style brakes. Yes, we put a little work into them earlier. We actually recorded some of these video segments out of order, but we'll edit them up in order for you. Yes, guys, you can start tearing off those lug nuts whenever you're ready. Oh, wrong one. Yep. Effectively, those... Uh, Lug nuts, there's only two of them on there, so this is going to come off kind of easy. Uh, there was a shortage of lug nuts when this car was uh, sold to me, so it just had enough that was on there to keep the car rolling straight. <laughs> Uh-oh, we might have to get you the uh, impactor if it's going to be difficult. Yeah, it might be. Might be. All right, I'll grab you some more tools. Right. Yep. <clears throat> In that box might be a black socket. Let's see if one of those fits. Yes, I know we're supposed to use one of them black hardened sockets for an impact. We don't have one right now, and I've never seen one of those explode, so that's going to come off of there just fine. There you go. Look at that. See? Everybody telling us what to do on the internet. You can't use those sockets. Well, guess what? We just did. So now what? I hear loud engines again. That's Pensacola for you guys. A very noisy city. Yeah, I like the revving. It's just the timing of it. <laughs> He's making extra noise on purpose like he knows who I am. <laughs> Alright, one wheel. One wheel. Yes, sir. Bye bye. <sighs> She's going to cut right through that brake line because that's the easiest way to get these things off with the least amount of stress. There it goes. Yay. Yay! Now, good, you got the pan under it to catch all the gooey juice because all the EPA police people in Europe, you can't do that kind of work at home! Yeah, well, guess what? We are. Yes, we dispose of our chemicals properly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, take that caliper off of there next. I believe those are probably 17 millimeter nuts on the back, maybe 19s. I think you're right. I think they're 17. Yeah, we'll pull that right off the back. Get that out of there next. Mm, no, it's got to go. You're tightening it. Oh, it's got to go. Yeah, you probably want to loosen it. I mean, I mean, unless you tighten it to the point it loosens, that might be an option. I don't know if I want to do that. Yeah, I wouldn't either, but it is an option. <laughs> this is the best lit brake work we've ever had on this channel. <laughs> it's usually it's so dark when I do it, but the sun is the perfect angle to get in there. Is it coming off? Yeah. Oh, good. Slowly. It bound up a little bit, huh? From the looks of the brakes on this car, it looks like most of which has already been serviced at some point prior to me getting this car. So this car, I think I've had it now, so probably almost eight, nine years now that I'm thinking about it. 
has been here for a while, but I think everything was taken care of on this prior to me getting it by the previous owner, and it's just been left to sit outside. But it doesn't have 50 years of built-up rust, grime, and wear on it. A lot of these things are just, looks like uh, newish stuff that was just left to sit outside. So the weather hasn't quite done its toll on it, and I've kept it covered the whole time that I've had it, so... It's got uh, well, minimal aging to it, you could say, for something that's been sitting idle outside. Outside. Blech. English. All right. You might be able to finger loosen it now. Yeah, finger it out of there. And then show me that, that reward that you get when you're, when you're done there. Hold it up for the camera. <laughs> you got it? Yeah. Let's see that bolt. Hold that up. Let me see that. There it is. And that comes with. Oh, hold it in the camera. There you go. There you go. Alright. Pulled. That's actually might be a thumbnail image. That was pretty good. Should slide straight out. There you go. Twist it while you're pulling it. Just about got it, and it's out. Hold it up, another prize. Let me see a prize in front of the camera. There you go. That's a good thumbnail too. <laughs> Rock and roll. I like how you're holding like a scalp. <laughs> I look like a face too. <laughs> Excellent. All right, now you're ready to pull that cap out of there. And these can be tricky on disc brakes because sometimes they get a little mangled. But this one actually looks to be in good shape, so whoever had it before was doing it right. You saw how I did the other side? Did you kind of tap it off? Yeah, I just kind of tapped it while pulling it at the same time. I don't know if you have the same monkey grip that I do, but you can try. It's moving, isn't it? it looks like it. Is it? I, I think so. I mean, from here, way back here, it looks like it's moved. Does it still look like it's moving? Not so much anymore, but... <laughs> oh, I saw it move! Hey, that's what she said. <laughs> it's moving. Yeah, it's moving. That's off. All right, you got something inside of there. You do. It looks like it's pretty well gumped over. Yeah. Uh... I think you need to find your rag so you can wipe it down a little bit. Good catch. That's it. Wipe the shit off of that. And you should have an Allen key that fits in there. And I don't remember what size it was. It seems like every time I take one of these off, it's a slightly different size. Mm -hmm. That one might be the six. I don't know, but it fits. Yeah, there it is. I think it's a six. That's the big one. There you go. Now this one is a standard threaded nut. So you've got that loose, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough. Start turning it. Put that wrench in there. Oh. And just, yeah. That's kind of the easy way to do it, it's kind of cheating. And just turn it. That's it. Actually, you know what, that one is the correctly threaded one. So go down, yeah, you gotta go down. The reason why she did that backwards, guys, is because before we started this video, we actually tested everything to make sure we get set up for it so she understood the process. And we did it on the opposite side, which is a reverse threaded nut. This side is a standard threaded nut, and the only reverse threaded nut on the whole Volkswagen, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm pretty sure I'm right, is on the left front spindle. And uh, that's the one you learned on first, a little lower. There it is. <laughs> that one, um, it's exactly like it, it's just threaded differently. But it's pretty simple how it operates. Um, because it's left-hand threaded, the wheel, of course, turns leftwards while you're driving forwards. You don't want the wheel to unscrew the nut. So that was the theory behind it anyway. But later, bay window buses and even Porsche 944s that use exactly the same kind of uh, nut, they use right-hand thread, so they realized that it wasn't that important. Anyway, you are just about ready to pull off that entire hub, so I'm going to switch camera angle, and then you're going to yank it. I had to pull that sucker out of there and watch for those bearings, because as you pull it, the bearing in the washer will fall off the end there. Yeah, you got it. It pulls straight off. Boom, there it is. I face it other way down. That's it. All right, that backing plate that's in there needs to come off now. And I think we determined they were 12 millimeter nuts. I think that was right, maybe 11s. Either way, you had the right tool there for it. They come out pretty easily. Yeah, it's gunky, but it's not rusty and it's not smashed up. Which again is another reason that tells me that uh, all these parts had been replaced on it prior to uh, me getting the Gia. 
This used to be a car show winner, you guys, for those of you watching. Uh, I don't know if you recognize it, but it used to be up in the uh, eastern Tennessee area, uh, Chattanooga, somewhere up around there. Well, it was a show winner, like I said. It belonged to somebody that uh, went through an unfortunate divorce, and his wife was also a Volkswagen nut. And the car literally got split in two. She ended up taking the entire drive line out of it, and amongst other parts, and he ended up keeping the, uh, the body and the paperwork to it, of course. And, uh, well, a few years later, ended up on a car dealership lot up in Maryville, Tennessee, where I saw it. And uh, I had seen the ad before on the Samba, which was kind of interesting, so I recognized the car right away due to the unique headlights that are on it. You know, I recognized it due to the fact it was yellow and had those, and as soon as I saw it, I wanted it. So I uh, made an offer, and about a month later, I went back and I got it. I was going to use a tow bar, but I ended up having a problem with the uh, hitch on the 350Z. It actually pulled the sheet metal out of it without me even having a chance to hook up the car yet. <laughs> the tow dolly was banging around so much it just messed itself up. But there's a backing plate. It's out. And that now exposes the spindle. There it is. There's the spindle. Now, you remember how that comes apart? Very carefully. Well, that too. Uh, you probably want to get the tie rod nut first. This one. That's the one. Because with that one out, the rest of them are really easy to get to. I feel like half of this is just remembering which bolts go with. That actually is very much what it's about. <laughs> Yeah, it's a castellated nut. Uh, sometimes on those nuts, you'll actually find a place where you can put in a, a cotter pin to stop the nut from turning. And those appear to be missing them. So there's no, ca no cotter pin to stop it at all. I don't know if it was omitted by the previous owner or if the little uh, ball joint on the end of the tie rod there is um, missing the hole, perhaps, which I've seen that too. <laughs> so I'm a little uncertain. Yay, look at that. One castellated nut. Drop that down there in the can so we don't lose it. Yep. And then knock that ball joint out on the, the uh, end of the tie rod there. Yeah, remember there's a special tool for that. Oh, yeah. yeah, you like that one, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. That's it. Just kind of gets wedged in there. This tool is great. Some people say, you should use a pickle fork. Yeah, well, if you use a pickle fork. What? A pickle fork. I'll show you what a pickle fork is later. <laughs> But if you use a pickle fork on there, you have to hammer the crap out of it and it just scratches and bangs up everything and any of the rubber boots that are there that might be in good shape become ruined. A pickle fork's not always the best way to do it. It is certainly an option and I did get one once upon a time because it fell off a truck in front of my house. I just heard ping, ka ting 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 And here it is, it's out. Lift him up. Up he goes. And that's it. Now turn that entire spindle around backwards and you should be able to get to the nuts. Yep. There you go. You probably want to do the bottom one first. You can't put a socket on it though. You'll have to use a wrench because unfortunately everything is pretty tight. Throw wrenches around. See? Yeah. Just getting angry. Just, just monkeying around. Uh, huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm funny. You see, that's the reason why we took the tie rod off. It's because, oh, you know what we should do for you? What? Get on there with a little pee, pee blaster. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm pretty good about squirting for distance. If you ever find drops in front of the toilet, they're not mine. Uh, I have questions. <laughs> <laughs> Those are kind of important to lube because as you're turning a nut, if it gets caught on the rust, the entire ball joint starts to spin around in, in the cup, and then you can't get the nut off of it. It gets to the point where you either have to uh, perhaps snap a pair of vice grips on the tip and try to unscrew it or you find yourself with a sawzall just cutting the whole damn thing off and pressing in new ball joints. I've uh, experienced both ways. Neither time have I been happy with it, but a little squirt on there seems to uh, go a long way when it comes to loosening up these nuts. <laughs> I don't believe the thing squirt that far. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> That's like the way I used to piss when I was a kid. I could piss 30 feet. <laughs> And my dad asked me about that one day. He yeah. says, the distance you could piss when you were a kid was absolutely incredible. He says, can you still do that? Can you? <laughs> no, no, I can't. Unfortunately, I lost that superhuman ability. My grandfather used to make fun of me, too. He says, you go in the woods and piss on a tree. He says, instead of pissing a tree right in front of you, you'd pick one way over there. <laughs> Get a nice arc stream and go about 30 feet. <laughs> can spin that spindle around the other way. 
we go, almost. And then attack the other nut on the top. And you guys, that's why we didn't remove that shock absorber first, because the spindle will actually hit the shock absorber and stop turning. Makes it a little more convenient. A lot of noise in the neighborhood today. Not as bad as it was earlier. Well, that's very true, but we're also not hearing any dogs barking right this second, which is like a, a blessing. Because usually they're just barking their asses off. Considering the slow jams we were privy to earlier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Neighbor behind me was cutting up a kid's swing set. I haven't seen any kids back there in years, so I don't even know why there was a swing set there at all. But they got back there and they just started hacking it apart with uh, just regular hacksaws and playing all kinds of really loud uh, R&B music from the 70s and 80s. And uh, they had opera on for a little bit, which was really weird. I must have missed that. Uh, we, we, no, you commented. We were, oh, we, were, we were making fun of that crap. You know, ah! <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, what is all that? I didn't want to record it though because it's copyright music reasons, but it was just, uh, it was shrill, it was obnoxious. It was funny. Yeah, and they weren't out there for that long, and they wrapped it up, and yeah, their backyard actually looks pretty good right now, not like mine, which has uh, just a white trash nightmare over here. That sounds like a, a band name. Yeah, it is a band name now. White trash nightmare? It is. You heard it here first. Like... <laughs> All right, put that bundle away. Fantastic. Now. Meow. That shock absorber's got to come off of there. Yep. Just the bottom of it. Although you can take the whole thing out, actually, because they don't need to be there anymore. Because we got nice shortened shocks, so those can go away. Everything's been unscrewing on this car very well, because as I said, everything just has an outdoor shelf life because it was just stored outside. But it hasn't seen, you know, years of, of rust and, and road uh, salt and all the craziness. This thing has just been parked for a long time. Which is a shame, too. All these parts look to be in really, really good shape. They're just weathered. Oh, man, we're good. Taking out that shock absorber. Hey. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> Got it? Mm -hmm. You're doing that spin the absorber routine, huh? <laughs> These were unfortunate. When we pulled off the one on the other side, it was bad. Oh yeah. They look fairly new, but they're just they're no good. And they're wrong for this car anyway. It's a full size shock and this thing is lowered and you don't want to put a full size shock on a car that's been lowered that much. Because guess why? They get ruined. And that's probably the reason why these uh, these shocks are shot on here. Okay. Hey. And the bottom should just slide off now. Yay! I think that it's lost the nut, but you lost the nut. It'll turn up. Let's not worry about that. All right, spindle's ready to come out. This is where we need some Duckman grip. Yep. Super Duckman grip. All right, I'm gonna move the camera to a different angle. I'm gonna shoot over this way, and I'm gonna come in here with my orange pole. Da -da -da. One. And the other one you'll have to burst out. Okay. Burst it out. Oh, the bottom one? Yep. Meant to say bust, but burst is good too. I gave you an extra R for the price of nothing. Actually, the top one came out relatively easy considering. <laughs> but the top one usually isn't too bad because it has that giant acorn note on it. I think that just did it. You did it? Oh, no, I'm going the wrong way. Uh oh. Yeah, you gotta tighten it. It was. Unless you already popped it. May have. Might have, yeah. Try to lift the whole thing off. I did. Um, show me your prize. There it is. Look at that. Okay. Oh. Gross. Did you get any onion? No. Nope. <laughs> show me what you got. There it is. What is it? That spindle. It's a spindle. And it's a drop spindle. Drop spindle. We're gonna put that sucker right back on here. Get that bottom one on there first. And I'm gonna show you an easier way to do this too. Put the bottom nut on there with the washer. I gotta dig it out. Oh, I gotta dig it out? Yeah. Well, get the top one ready too then. That way you're ready to go. Um, the round side goes up. Right? Yep. Okay. 
All right, that'll get you started. Now stay right where you're at. Okay. This is where we show you the easy way. Okay. Cool. Oh. And now the top. Now remember, we've got to look for that little notch mm -hmm. in the front of the acorn nut that's on the top there in the ball, mm -hmm. ball joint. In the upper washer. Nut. Upper nut. Nut. Fluffy nutter. Upper nutter. Nutter upper lip. Yep. Okay, you're ready to start tightening them, boys. That's too small. You are correct. Bottom one first because we've really got a pitch. Come to my knife. Can't figure tighten it? Nope. No. Yeah. It might help a little bit. Nope. <laughs> well, it will when you get to the greasy point. You're not there yet. You're pretty good at tweaking them nuts. Yeah. I've had a good nut instructor. <laughs> this is a 8 inch long wrench from the center here to the center here. So what you're going to do is you're going to put that on the bottom. We've got us a scale. Mm -hmm. And we have to pull this to 51 foot-pounds, but because it's only 8 inches, 51 foot-pounds will not be accurate. You have to actually do the math. It turns out to 67 foot-pounds. So you're going to pull that scale up to 67 and stop. Pull it straight. You're not pulling straight. No, no, no. Yes. You might have to move the wrench. Yeah, I'm going to. You want to be roughly 90 degrees to the, uh, the wrench. Otherwise, you'll get some unusual numbers. Here? Yeah. Look for your 67 and then stop. I can't read that first Yeah, it's digit. a little hard to read, but I think you hit 69, so you're fine. That's okay. what it looked like to me anyway. Nice. The numbers were pretty rapidly changing. Yeah. <laughs> now tighten up the top one, and then repeat the process for the bottom. Yeah, math is important, you guys. Eight inches is roughly 75% of a foot. Well, not roughly. It is, exactly. So, 75 divided by 51 is roughly 67, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, B's about to get the top cinched up there. She's pulling the scale up to 67. Ready? Pull it at a 90 degree angle. 90 degree angle, 90 degree angle. It's yeah. very critical that you do, otherwise it's going to give you a weird reading. Did you get it? Yeah. Fantastic. All right, turn that spindle back. Drop that tie rod back into place. Put the castellated nut in there. Oh my goodness, excuse me. All right, I think you got it. Yep. Pull that spindle back straight. You know what goes in next, right? The new brake disc. The disc, that's correct. Stay right where you're at. I'm going to bring it to you. Yay! Right. Bring me that brake. Yeah. Bring me back the bigger brake. Ooh, stretchy, stretchy. All right. All right. 23 pounds. You ready? Yep. Slide that right on there. Watch that washer and make sure it doesn't come flying out the front. Good, you got it. All right, wipey wipey. Now, remember that washer that we had? The ones that came in the kit don't fit. We ended up going back to the old factory ones. I blame MP for this. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hold that washer up so people can see it. Hold it over the yellow fender so I get a good look at it. There you go. You notice it has a little tang on the inside of it. It has to line up with the slot on the spindle shaft. Mm -hmm. I can't see the shaft with your head, dear. There you go. And then just slide it right over. Do you have the nut that goes on there? I should. One of them? Yes, and this is the standard one. Standard one, standard slits. Mm -hmm. Righty tighty. Righty tighty. Wait. It goes on. Flat the, side goes in. Flat side in. Okay. Yeah, the flat flanged side. Flat. Come on. Put me in a butt. 
Butt nut. Butt nut. Nice. Hope the threads aren't boogered. Wouldn't be surprised if they are. Chinese tech for you. Oh, you got it. You're good. Yeah. You remember how to do this? How to tighten it? Yep. You need to do it with the Allen wrench. Well, no. There's a few steps you do before that. Finger tighten as tight as you can get it. Okay. Tighty, tighty, tighty. Tighty, tighty. And start spinning it while you're tightening it with the other hand. Okay. Spin it. I mean, spin it real good. Like, give it a good spin, like Wheel of Fortune crap. There you go. And try to turn it at the same time. I know. It's, <laughs> it's not moving. Okay, good. Now what you need to do, and I'm just going to double check to be sure. I do have monkey grip. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I turned it quite a bit more. <laughs> There you go. Now, from where you're at, you want to turn it backwards a twelfth of a turn. So wherever there's this a flat spot, there. make a pointy spot go. Okay. So a twelfth of a turn. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. That's that it. You got twelfth. Yeah. Then tighten up your pinch nut. Pinch nut. Observing where it's at. That's what sets your well. Effectively, it's the end play <laughs> of your entire rotor. So once that's on there, it should have very, very little when you wiggle it like this. Oh, shit. Oh, you shit on it. Is that the right one? They were no. smaller. I think it's a four and a half. Versus the six that's on there. Originally, the aftermarket Chinese parts are using different sizes than the OEMs. I don't know why. I have no idea why, but it's done. We gotta deal with it the way it is, or we can put the other OEM parts on there that we had all along. This is just fine too, but since we have all brand new, let's just go with all brand new. Uh oh, did you find them? Yeah! Oh, good! Right hey, here. Oh, yeah, okay. How about that? Uh, yeah. That one's too small. I don't make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> I smell farts. Yes. Oh, was that you? Yes. Oh, jeez, I thought it was the paper mill again. <laughs> I thought it was just going to be a cold night. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, here in Pensacola, there's a paper mill off to the north. And whenever we have a cold front coming in and the air comes out of the north, the entire city smells like farts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, you got it on there good? Yes. Does it still spin? No. Not the nut, the tire, tire hub. Yeah. It looks like it spins nice and smoothly. Okay, you ready to put that cap back on? Yeah. Now the difference from the left side to the right side, once again, is that cap on the left side has a hole in the middle, it's square. And that's for your speedometer cable. This side does not have that. So you just put the cap back on. So what you're going to do is grease up that nut on the outside. This is for water protection. The grease is right over there, you got it. We're not going to put the, the caliper on first? We're just capping it off. Oh, okay. This is just cap. Okay. Just cap it off. Yeah. Yep, gummy gummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. You got it right on the first try that time. You're good. That's enough. Okay. <laughs> That's plenty. <laughs> Get out. Yep. Ugh. Is it a little gummy in there? Ugh. Let me see what you got. Oh, that's not that bad. It's a little emulsified. It looks like uh, some kind of caramel whipped cream. Yummy. Mocha choca placa laca. It smells like mocha choca placa laca also. <laughs> Give it a nice slick and then put it back on, scooping up what's on there. There you go, scoop it right into position. Put that on there and then gently tap it with the hammer. Just gently. So you don't want to dent the shit out of it, just, just gently. Tap it around, right. Go around a circle. Doesn't take much, it'll usually just go right on. The other side put up a little bit of a fight, but that was out of the ordinary. All right, one caliper. Caliper. Now, when you observe these, make sure you put them on right side up, you're upside down, and wrong side out. There you go. You always want the little port on the back, this guy here, to face up. Because when you bleed your brakes, you want the air bubbles to go to the top, because they'll rise, so they always go up. That's how you know you're left and you're right, in case they're not labeled. Usually they are. This one actually was. But and it goes back here? Yep, it goes back there. Oh, well, I gotta get the bolts lined up. Oh, do you have the bolts? They're on top of the fender? Fantastic. That's one of those things that's really hard for us to video. These, of course, need to be appropriately torqued. 
However, my torque wrench happens to be in Rob's truck right now because I helped him with his Ford truck last week. So you're not going to get to see us appropriately torque that, but that's okay. We know these are not properly torqued, so we can come back and revisit it when we finally do put the uh, last wheels on this thing and get everything fitted. In. There. There you go. Fantastic. Okay. Come on out of there. <laughs> I might be stuck. Oh, my foot. Okay. What you got there, B? A wheel. A wheel. A wheel. A wheel. Wee wee. <laughs> it's wee wee good. Mm hmm. Should go right on there. They don't weigh much anything. They're lightweight stamped steel. There you go. Just put one lug nut on there. Put that in the up position. There you go. Let's see if that hubcap up there goes on there. That's fine, actually. <laughs> so that gives us the look that we're going for. You see, we got them early style Beetle headlights on here. Now we got the early style hubcaps and five lug wheels, along with the early bumpers. Um, that makes this car look earlier than it actually is, and I love it. What do you think? I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> well, that's how it's going to be then. Um, we're going to wrap this one up. As you guys already know, we studied on the other side already, so that wraps up putting together our front, front brakes, at least until it comes time to installing the brake lines, but the lines is going to be a separate video altogether. So as always, everybody, please leaky likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle belly that we get updates every time I upload the video. Don't forget to check out duckshit.net for all of our different social media links. And B, do you have anything you'd like to add today? No? Mm -hmm. What do you think of the experience? It was fun. It was fun? Yeah. You liked it? Yeah. Good. Thanks for watching, everybody.